textures, vintage color casts, and some experimentation this week on In Post. Hi everybody, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to In Post. So this week is a little different. Uh, I'm doing some experimentation, continuing uh, this week's theme of being out of my comfort zone. Uh, if you didn't see the In the Field episode on my visit to the Salton Sea, check that out. And uh, I did uh, some urban exploration photography, um, which is not my normal genre. And so uh, today's photo um, processing, it's you know got uh, it's you know it's an abandoned type area. And so I wanted to add some texture, add uh, you know kind of a, a faded vintage look to it. And so um, today we're gonna spend all, all our time in layers and doing some blending of different textures and adding some, uh, you know, some color casts to it to, to give the photo a faded older look. So let's just dive right in. So this is the photo with some basic adjustments done in Lightroom and uh, a bit of contrast added in effects. And um, I, I wanted to use this photo as an opportunity to explore and play uh, more with layers and with textures. And so that's what I set out to do. So um, these textures that you have, um, either they're textures that you get for free if you're part of the, um, you know, if you own on one, you get these uh, loyalty rewards, um, or they're my own textures. And if you're interested in them, check out my website for them. Uh, so this first one here that I've added is uh, called Tundra, and just so you know how I add textures, I'm gonna open up my browser, go into Extras, and either My Extras or On One Extras. I have most of my, uh, my stuff is in My Extras, things I've added after the fact, into the Textures area, and then a whole bunch of these different things in here. And um, the first one came from this Tundra pack from Two Little Owls, and they provide a whole bunch of you know cool looking textures, um, you know, very, you know, and I just like these, they, you know, not quite fabric like an old oil painting, things like that, but give that aged feel. And that's what I'm going for here. I mean, this is a, you know, <laughs> former glory. It's, uh, it, it's bright out. There's no clouds. Everything's washed out. It's, it, I wanted to have a very faded and kind of, um, you know, uh, rough and tumble type look to it. So I added this texture here and let me highlight that. If I can get my button in the right place. There we go. And, uh, yeah, I like I like the texture. It's already got some type of its own bordering on it, uh, but I did use a mask. Do Control M, and ooh, that's really hard to see here. Ah, it's because I have the wrong layer selected. There we go. And uh, you can see I removed the texture from the center. I don't want to completely obliterate the signs. I mean, these are my subjects here, uh, but uh, I did want to have some smooth fade. And then it continued playing. I added a second texture, this one from a Florence texture pack. And this was mainly to give it kind of a border. So if I, I highlight that one, you can see now around the edges, there's a little more rough scratchiness. And if I click on that layer, control M, you know, so the mask here I created with the line mask tool, just, you know, create this, drag the feather up, and then just kind of clicked four points into a rough, rectangle. Uh, I didn't measure this accurately, uh, but just enough to give the hint of a border. And then you know, smoothed it out with the refine mask to you know, make the edges of that border even smoother. The feather does a nice job with the line mask and uh, the, refine, uh, the, br the blur brush in the refine area uh, really smooths it out even further. And so that you know, gives them you know, just another, it's, it's almost like a vignette, but it's treated more like a border here. I darken that even further using a color fill layer. Let me click on that one and highlight that. And this is a very subtle one. You see the opacity is really low. Oh, I, sh I should have mentioned blending modes on these. I'm so sorry. Um, this one uh, for Florence, it was normal and just the opacity. And for the Tundra one, I used the darken blending mode. That just looked nice. Um, I do tend to experiment with blending modes on textures. Sorry about that. Um, back to the color fill layer. So this is nothing more than this guy right here, adding a color fill layer. And you click on it and I just picked a color and it's this grayish tone. I just chose that from my color wheel and you know, picked right around there. I didn't want complete black, uh, but I wanted something that was going to darken those edges a little bit. And let me remove what I just added, there we go. And with the mask, once again, 
you can see it's the same mask. It's a copy and, uh, and paste by and large here. Um, looks like I did a little more blending on my texture itself, but for the darkening of the edges, it was just to, to just get more of a feel of a vignette. And then this is where um, I, I, I got my learning in. This is where things looked a little different. Um, when I added this very bright yellow texture, um, at first, when it came in, let me get to the normal mode here. You can see it, it really washed out the photo. It actually gave it a very nice vintage feel. A little bit too much. I, just, I started playing around with blending modes. Normal's one that I like, you know, overlay, that didn't look good, at least not to me. Hard light. I settled on color. Click that again. And, you know, it, um, it gave a little, bit of a, a little bit of warmth, but also that washed out feel that I want for this image. And then the very final texture I added, it's one from my uh, Iberia, actually both of these are from my Iberia package. Uh, this is just for the, the, the top and the bottom, and really subtle. I mean, this overlay, uh, it's a blending mode of overlay, and the opacity is just 3%, which is a very, very tiny touch to add a little more grain into the upper and lower portions of the image. You can see this mask here, Control M. This is a reflected gradient mask, so just using the masking bug, it's uh, this shape right in here, reflected gradient. And you just drop it on there and it will remove from the center and then you can adjust the gradients either way in the, uh, you know, well, if, in this case, horizontally and vertically. Uh, if you rotate the bug, you can do it you know, left to right. Just so that I could keep the texture off of my signs. I wanted to make sure those remained pretty clear so that, you know, that's, again, my subject. Uh, but yeah, add a little more grain and um, a little more darkness because this is a very dark texture, just to subtly bring the eyes in a little bit more. So um, yeah, this, you know, this, this is it. So this was, uh, here's before I added all the textures, I'm going to do an option click, and that shows you just this layer. And then here is the after. So the tip of the week is to try something new, experiment, give things a shot. You may not like the end results, I mean, I'm kind of you know, lukewarm at best on this photo, uh, but I did learn some things along the way, um, and, and that's you know, kind of the point of the experimentation. It may not yield um, the results you're hoping for for the photo you're working on, but you're going to pick up something that later on down the line you'll use, and it will you know, really be a, a nice addition to you know, one of your you know, portfolio-worthy photos. In this example, the texture that was very, very bright yellow, um, when I changed the blending mode to color, that, you know, that added a very nice you know, um, cast to it. And the texture itself, you know, the grain and the grit on that wall didn't come through. But the, the blending mode changed how uh, it, you know, just how it affected the overall photo. So that's, you know, a, a little tidbit I'll tuck away in my brain. And that'll come out again in a future photo. That's it for this week in post. I hope you've enjoyed it and got a tip or two you can use on your photography. And speaking of your photography, I'd love to hear from you. I'd really like getting your questions. And I've been meaning to get together uh, a question and answer episode of InPost. So uh, I know I, I answer every email, usually within 48 hours. Uh, but I, I want to collect those together, get an episode out, and you know, share that with everybody. If you've got questions, you know, hit me up through my website. Uh, you can do comments on the video here, plus ones, Facebook likes, wherever and whoever you're consuming this. Go ahead and let me know if it's something useful by just you know hitting a like button or doing a plus one. Those really mean a lot. Help me come back week after week. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting. Thank you.